So Matter is the new smart home standard from Apple, Google, Amazon, and many other companies. And it's supposed to solve a lot of issues you might be having today with your smart home, especially with compatibility and making that a little bit simpler. But it's not released yet. And so we still don't know exactly what the future of Matter will hold. And Jennifer Patterson Tui over at The Verge sat down with Michelle Turner from Google around the recent announcements at Google I.O. And the interview, I think, sheds a lot of interesting light about what Matter will be like. And I want to add my comments here and explain a few things that I find interesting from this article. So the article start, starts off talking about the setting of the birth of Matter in early 2019 when Michelle Turner and her colleague Grant Erickson at Google went out for dinner in Silicon Valley. And when I used to live in the Bay Area, I always had this idea of if a handful of times I go out to a nice meal, like I wonder who's around me just plotting the future of tech. Now, if you're familiar at all with the past news about Matter, you probably know that it's been delayed multiple times. And Michelle addresses this in the interview by saying that she thinks that the group made the right call and that they're really working on having a high quality experience in people's homes. She says, this is super complex. Partners have to make sure that the multi-admin is working accurately, a key feature of Matter that allows devices to work with any platform simultaneously. That part was added by The Verge. I think this is really the exciting part of this because companies making light bulbs, smart plugs, whatever, they're not just making it for Google Nest or for Amazon Alexa or Apple HomeKit. They're making it to work across all of those systems through Matter. And while that's more complex for them to get up front, it opens up a ton of different options for how we want to structure our smart homes once Matter's here. A lot of people tend to think of HomeKit or Amazon Alexa or Google Nest as being just the operating system of your smart home and the basis for making all your smart home decisions. And with Matter, and even already today, I think it's shifting and it's not really about the smart home ecosystem you choose as much as all of the different pieces you choose for each individual part of your smart home, whether that's lighting or home security or cameras and getting those to work together. And the advantage here is that with Matter, each of those smart administrators or assistants like Apple HomeKit just become becomes another way you can control your smart home rather than the basis in which you have to make all the decisions about what goes in your smart home. So long story short, for a lot of us Apple HomeKit users, it opens up a ton more available accessories to be able to add to our smart homes that we can't right now if we want them to work with Apple HomeKit. And then Jennifer asked Michelle about what this means for the future of the smart home. And the first thing Michelle says is that it's going to make everything significantly simpler. And I completely agree. And then she she goes on to talk about the second piece is that it will speed up the reliability of your local network. And one of the key parts of this that I've talked about in previous videos is the move to a lot of accessories being based on thread. Google, just like Apple, is very invested in thread as a key part of the future of matter. And the idea here is, as Michelle says, because in our mind, if it's not as fast as a light switch, what's the point? So we believe Matter's going to drive down those latency numbers significantly and improve the overall reliability of devices in your home. Now, this is a lofty goal and I think something that Matter will make a big step forward towards. I just love that these big companies are focusing a lot of really smart people and attention on solving these basic problems so that using smart home tech becomes effortless. Because as you know right now, while smart home tech can save you a lot of time and be really convenient in certain ways, it does take a little bit of knowledge up front, watching YouTube videos or doing other things to educate yourself to make the right decisions to get everything set up and troubleshoot things when it goes wrong. And just to make some of that more reliable, I think it's gonna be really nice with Matter. And then Michelle goes on later in the interview to talk about some of the benefits beyond Matter that Google wants to bring. And it's around the proactive home being an intelligent layer where in her example, I'm watching TV, it's 9.30 p.m., the kids are in bed, and I get a notification on my phone that the lights just went on in my kid's bedroom. Is somebody sick? Are they watching YouTube? Being able to do an anomaly detection. I get where Google's coming from there, and Google does have a lot of really smart AI applied to a lot of different things, just like Apple and Amazon do as well. But I'm a little skeptical here that this kind of a solution is actually gonna work, but I think what it means most importantly for us as consumers is that, as I mentioned, because there's this new setup where you're gonna be able to switch and use different smart assistants to control your smart home at different 
different times and, and whatever makes sense for you, then these smart assistants are gonna have to compete more with each other to gain market share and get users. So people won't just be forced into using Amazon Alexa or HomeKit or Google Nest just because that's what they have to use because it works with what they have. They'll be able to choose and because of this choice, Apple and Amazon and Google will have to step up their game and make additional cool smart features for their platforms to keep users engaged and using their software. And at the end of the day, that's just a win for us as consumers. And then Jennifer from The Verge asked Michelle from Google a little bit later on in the interview. So when the Nest thermostat is upgraded to Matter, you'll be able to control it from Apple HomeKit, such as a HomePod or Apple's Home app with Matter. And then Michelle's answer is really telling here that she says, yes, and that is part of the multi-admin feature. But then she highlights that my HomeKit controller, my HomePod or my Apple TV should be able to control my thermostat. So it seems like with HomeKit from this and other sources that it, you're gonna need to have a home hub, either a HomePod, an Apple TV, or maybe an always on iPad. It's hard to say what of all of this you'll be able to use just your iPhone with, but I think there's still some value in getting an Apple TV or a HomePod mini because it seems like at this point it will act as an enhanced bridge for Matter down the road, if not an essential piece of using Matter with HomeKit. But that remains to be seen, all the details of how that works out. But if you're thinking about getting a HomePod mini or an Apple TV this summer, it is something that would probably benefit you once matter comes regardless. And then Jennifer asks a really good question for Michelle is, as you said, matter is complicated and there's a lot of expectation that's been placed on its shoulders. What would you say is the biggest misconception right now with matter? And Michelle goes on to say that the biggest misconception is that it's gonna solve every problem in the internet of things. And I completely agree. I think a lot of people look at matter as the end game of like, oh, I'm gonna start start my smart home and it's magically all gonna work once matter comes. I'm just gonna hold off until then, but I don't think that's a good idea. A smart home is best built over time as you gradually add things and see what makes sense for your life. And so there's no reason just because matter is on the horizon that you shouldn't start today in looking at things with your smart home. I think getting started with Apple HomeKit's great if you're an Apple user, but either way, uh, you know, building your smart home today is gonna be better than just waiting and thinking that matter is somehow gonna make everything magically better right out of the gate. This is an exciting evolution of the smart home and it's gonna make things better in the long run for all of us, but it's solving a limited set of problems, especially at first with interoperability. And it's again, gonna be up to a lot of these smart assistants like Apple HomeKit or Google Nest to fill in some of those gaps and add some of this functionality that we're gonna want down the road. And then in the next question, Michelle really addresses, I think one of the biggest benefits for us as consumers is one of the things that matter does is level the playing field for these device makers. Now they're all getting a little bit commodified and they're worried about that. And commodified is kind of a funny word that you probably don't use that often. But what it means is that if any of the smart plugs, any of the light bulbs out there work with matter and then work with all of your devices, what's the difference which brand you go with? And I think we're going to see a lot of creative differentiation between different brands. And I still think there's a difference to be had in the quality of the firmware and software that's running on these smart devices and how often they get software updates from these manufacturers. And those are still going to be things worth paying a premium for. But I think it is going to put a little bit of pricing pressure across the whole market to uh, make things a little bit more affordable for us as consumers, because hopefully for these companies, they're going to have a way bigger market to sell to. And that's going to help offset some of the thinner margins they might have. And there's a really telling thing that Michelle says next about Google. And I love this. She says, we're not experts in lighting. We're not the experts in home cleaning. We're not the experts in leak detection. That's what our partners do. And I completely agree. I just think that the idea some people have that either Apple or Google or Amazon should just make all of the smart home tech products they use. So they can buy them all from one brand is just bonkers and doesn't add up. And I'll address this more in a future video where I don't think it's a good idea for Apple to make a lot of new smart home accessories. So subscribe and hit the notification bell if you don't wanna miss that video. And of course, if you wanna read the full text interview that I reference here, it's in the description below. And if you're curious about Thread, last year I made a video where I interviewed a bunch of smart home executives about Thread and what that is gonna mean for the future of the smart home. And it's still very much relevant today. So I'll link that here somewhere on the screen. Thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.